I hope you are enjoying the learning experience with us. Please download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy. So in this video, we will be starting our new unit of macroeconomics, which is, which is unit number six, money and banking. In this whole unit, we will be studying about money, barter system, drawbacks of barter system, then the functions of money, what money is, then money supply, then the measurement of money, who supplies money, and various things. And in the banking, we will study about the commercial banks, functions and then your credit multiplier which is most important for your examination point of view this is very important for your exam examination point of view then your central bank its functions then your types of deposits types of loans and various terminology regarding what is CSR, what is SLR, what is bank rate, what is repo rate, what is reverse repo rate everything will be covered in this unit of money and banking. So now see let's start how the money evolved why do we need money from where it has come who invented this and what is its use and see for us what money is a paper note a coin this is what money is for us but in actual term, in the terms of economics, what is money? Money is a thing that is commonly accepted as a medium of exchange. See, if we define money, then it is a thing that is commonly accepted as a medium of exchange. Now, see, exchange is the way of life. You want to buy something. Let's say you go to a general store and you want to buy a bread. Right? You pay money. In the uh, you know previous era, what was what used to happen if you are pro if you are producer of wheat, right? Then you cannot only survive with the wheat. You need clothes. You need water. You need shelter. And there is a person who manufactures clothes. So there was a trading of goods with goods. There was an exchange of goods with goods, but it suffered from a various drawbacks which became very difficult to you know e evaluate that how much wheat you should give for a particular cloth or how much cloth you should give for the amount of wheat so you cannot compare the value of wheat and cloth so it became very difficult to have exchange in order to eval in order to eliminate this drawback the money came into existence now 
it see our whole life depends upon the exchange we exchange nowadays we exchange money which is evoluted right but previously what we used to do we used to exchange the goods with goods that was called as barter system but you need the goods to satisfy your wants right so what you do so there became a need to invent something which could be exchanged for anything now if there is if you want a bread and if there is person who wish to sell bread and who needs clothes in that part but you do not you are not a manufacturer of clothes you are not the manufacturer of clothes so what will you do you will exchange your bread with money he will exchange clothes with money so money is a medium of exchange now so money is a thing that is commonly accepted as a medium of exchange see before what was there it was previously it came to the metal coins in the market which was of gold and silver during the era of kings and queens right metal coins and then we invented alloy coins or a money with alloy metal your copper your zinc right and then at last we came up with paper notes and now it is the era of plastic money plastic money is your debit cards your credit cards right but now see what have we done now now we are playing with the virtual money this is something new that have come up that i am giving it a name by my way to explain you i don't know what people in economics will term this thing but i am telling you it's a virtual money in the case of wallets your paytm wallet your mobivic again what you do you using money you are exchanging money with the services so this is we can term it as a virtual money or digitalized money digitalization which is going on in india these days so we can also name it as digitalized money right so this is how evolution of money this is how the history of money is first they came the metal coins that is gold and silver then the alloy coins and then your paper notes then your plastic money and now you have digitalized or virtual money with you again you can write the other definition of money as well which is money is an instrument that serves as number 1 a medium of exchange number 2 a measure of value it's a medium of exchange you can exchange money for any good you want you need to satisfy your wants measure of value the money has some value 5 rupees 10 rupees 100 500 even what you will buy in the market also has the value so money created a measure of value third a store of value you can store your money with you you can store it in the bank system deposits fixed deposits right a standard for deferred payment 
standard for deferred payment now what does this mean what do you mean by deferred which means an outstanding right so money gives you an option to have an outstanding payment that the payment you can give in the future such as loans you take loans now you use it but you repay the loans in future so that is a standard for deferred payment see there are two concepts of money that is narrow concept and the broad concept What is the narrow concept that your money in narrow term is equal to your currency means your notes and coins plus your demand deposits that is the money you have in your bank as deposits you have your debit card you, you can go to ATM you can withdraw the money anytime so these are the very liquid things you have with your currency is liquid demand deposits are also very liquid so these are the money assets you call them as your money assets and money assets are the assets which functions as money these are the assets which functions as See your demand deposits functions as money. You go you take your debit card, your ATM card, you go to the ATM, you punch that card in and you can get your cash. You can you will get the currency. This is a narrow concept of money, and you call this demand depo deposits as money assets. Now in the broad concept we have money is equal to your currency plus demand deposits plus your near money assets your near money assets are the assets which can be converted into money within a short notice these are the assets that can be converted into money within a short notice so these are the two concepts of money which is a narrow concept and the broad concept I hope you like our video. Please download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us.